Hey gang, Professor Brown here, and once again we've got another tutorial. This time it's all about how to recognize the different types of follicles that are found in the ovaries during the first half of the menstrual cycle. So we're going to begin with the follicles that every woman is born with, and these are those dormant follicles that live down in the uh, in the egg nests that are found in the cortex of the ovaries, and these are called primordial follicles. So we're going to begin with some primordial follicles. And all follicles are going to contain an oocyte. There's going to be an egg cell in there. So we're going to draw that in pink. So here's our oocyte. Um, and it's got a nucleus in there. So we'll go ahead and add that. So there we go. There's our oocyte. I feel like Bob Ross. It's a happy little oocyte. Now, in a primordial follicle, it's just the oocyte and a single layer of epithelial cells. And in the case of a primordial follicle, those epithelial cells are squamous cells. So they're very flattened. When you're looking at these in the microscope, you probably won't even be able to distinguish the individual cell membranes. But what you will see is the nuclei are going to be compressed. So they're kind of dorsoventrally squashed like a so. So in any uterine, or sorry, not uterine, any ovarian sample that you look at in the microscope, what you're going to find out in the cortex um, of the ovary is a whole bunch of these primordial follicles. So it's an oocyte, and this is a primary oocyte. This is arrested at the beginning of meiosis one. So this is what you were born with, and this is how most of your follicles are at any given time. Um, if you're a lady, if you're a man, you don't have these. So these are primordial follicles. So now what I want to do is move along, and let's erase these, and let's look at um, what we call primary follicles. Okay, now primary follicles form under the influence of follicle stimulating hormone. So let's start with our primary follicle, our primordial follicle. So I'm going to redraw the primordial follicle um, over here real quick. So here are our squamous epithelial cells. These are a little big because I'm drawing fast, but these should be squamous epithelial cells surrounding our oocyte. And in the transition from um, primordial to primary, these follicle cells right here are going to undergo a morphological transformation. So our oocyte is going to stay put. So here's our oocyte. There's its nucleus right there. But these follicle cells here are going to become cuboidal cells. So the epithelium surrounding that oocyte becomes a cuboidal epithelium. The primordial follicle makes nothing. It secretes nothing. It is dormant. It's just kind of hanging out. Primary follicles, on the other hand, are capable of producing estrogens. This is why we don't see any development of secondary sexual characteristics until a girl reaches menarche or the onset of menstruation and starts making these primary follicles every month. That exposure to estrogen is what causes that um, development of secondary sexual characteristics. So these guys right here are now called granulosa cells. And they actually work with some other cells. Um, this is for A and P. This isn't a histo class or anything like that. So we're not going to get into too much detail. But the developing follicles, these, these cells and the cells around them, are going to work together to produce estrogens. And I apparently don't know how to make an S. So these are primary, this is a primary follicle. Now, in addition to working with the cells around them to make estrogens, these primary, um, these granulosa cells in the primary follicle are going to undergo mitotic division. And you're going to get multiple layers of cells around the oocyte here. So I'm just going to draw a little ring around here. And this is going to represent the layer of cells that we initially had. Okay. But 
these cells will undergo mitosis and you'll get another layer of cells around that layer of cells. These two will be cuboidal epithelial cells with the nucleus. Okay, So this first primary follicle that we made with a single layer of cells is what we would refer to as a unilaminar follicle. So this guy right here is a unilaminar primary follicle. As soon as you have more than one layer of cells around the oocyte, it becomes a multi-laminar primary follicle. But it's still a primary follicle. So mitosis will proceed and we'll get more and more layers of granulosa cells around that oocyte until eventually we reach the stage of becoming a secondary follicle as soon as gaps appear in between these cells. So let's move on then to secondary follicles. And these are also known as antral follicles. Now these follicles, so once again we're going to have an oocyte and things are going to get a little smaller as far as the oocyte goes because we've got to zoom out a little bit. Um, so there's our oocyte and the follicle itself has now gotten quite big. The, the layer of granulosa cells around that, around that oocyte, and I messed up just a little bit, so let's go over here, let's erase our oocyte. It's supposed to be in the middle, I messed up just a little. So let's go here and here and there. That's better. That oocyte needs to be right there. Okay, so we still have all those little granulosa cells. Okay, they're all over the place. We can't really see the cell membranes around those cells anymore because we've zoomed out a bit. Okay, but one thing that we will see in here is an accumulation of fluid. So let me change my color palette and let's go here, you'll see little pockets open up in between the granulosa cells. Now all the granulosa cells are no longer touching one another. This little pocket is called an antrum. Each one of these is an antrum. And I can't make A's either. I'm on the ball today. That's an antrum right there. There's an antrum. Now eventually these antra will grow and they will eventually fuse together into a single large antrum. So you'll see something that looks like if I could get the right tool. Let's erase that out. Good. So you would eventually see something that looks like this. So early on secondary follicles will have many small antra and then later on they'll develop a single antra. Now the problem here is that tertiary or so-called graphian follicles also contain a single antrum. So some people have a hard time distinguishing between a secondary and a an, uh, graphian or tertiary follicle. My suggestion is you look at the location of that oocyte. That's why I erased it and redrew it a little while ago because in a secondary follicle, even if it has a single antrum, the oocyte will largely be centered in the middle of the follicle what we'll see is that later on that oocyte gets pushed off to the edge. So this is a secondary follicle. Whenever you see an antrum filled with fluid, that's going to be um, no longer primary, it's now secondary. And this fluid here is called, so let's go ahead and just get that little vocabulary word in, it's called the liquor folliculi. And it's going to play a very important role in ovulation when we get on to the last follicle. So let's silence that, go over here, and now we're going to go to our tertiary, or what's also known as a graphian follicle. So these are very large. All the time those granulosa cells are um, cranking out not only are they working with these other cells to crank out estrogens, but they're also cranking out liquor folliculi into that antrum, and the antrum is growing and expanding. They're also doing mitosis. So this thing is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and so we end up with a very, very, very large follicle, something like a so.
and we have a very, very, very large antrum, something like so. Right, here's the antrum right in here. There we go. Um, so this is going to be just going to kind of fill that in so you realize that this, this is full of that liquor folliculi. Okay, so this is all fluid filled. Our oocyte is now pushed way over here, over to the side. Here's our oocyte down here. And we have two areas that contain the granulosa cells now. We still have granulosa cells all around here. So this perimeter, the cortex, if you will, of the follicle is still all full of granulosa cells. And these cells are still working with the cells around them to make estrogens. But estrogen levels are getting very high at this point in the menstrual cycle. Okay, So we're about to see something amazing happen. So we have our granulosa cells around here, but now we have a layer of cells associated with the oocyte that's kind of separate from these other cells. So we have our antrum in the middle. So let's go ahead and label that. So there is the antrum. Here we have some granulosa cells here. We have our oocyte here. And this is still a primary oocyte, OK? It's still stuck in meiosis 1. And then we have this layer of cells that kind of form a crown radiating around the primary oocyte. So we call this the corona radiata, the radiant crown. And one of the things we should note is that down here, the connection between the cells of the corona radiata and the granulosa cells around the periphery is very loose. There's gaps in here. So the oocyte and its corona radiata are held only lightly to the wall comprised of the granulosa cells. So what happens is at the time um, that estrogen levels peak, luteinizing hormone, which has been produced this whole time, is finally released from the anterior pituitary gland. And luteinizing hormone comes in and it's going to act kind of like a needle or a pin on a balloon. It's a very crudely drawn needle. But essentially, luteinizing hormone is going to act like a pin, and it's going to release all the pressure that's been built up by the liquor folliculi accumulating in the antrum, like a water balloon. And it's going to come in here, and it's going to pop it. And that's the wrong... Here, there's the right button. Pa pow So this thing is going to pop. And there's essentially going to be an explosion, almost. So this stuff is going to... Come out of here. I hit the wrong button. Where's the button I want? Here's the button I want. I'm so sorry. So this is going to come rocking out of here. So this is going to kind of, I cannot seem to get my buttons right here, people. I am so sorry. This is what happens when you do these kind of on the fly. So there's that button. Where's my other button? Here's my other button. Yay, look, I made it work. Huzzah. So this is going to rupture, kind of like a water balloon. And the liquor folliculi in the antrum is going to go gushing out of here. I think that's a science word, isn't it? Gush out? I'm sure it is. But the force of this is going to shear this right off, and that oocyte is going to emerge. It's going to, it's almost, it sounds kind of gross, but it, you can almost liken it to a pimple popping. Um, and here's all the goop that's going to come out, but along with it is going to come this oocyte. So we'll draw our oocyte, and if I can once again get the colors right. So there's our oocyte here, and it's going to have this corona radiata around it, this layer of leftover granulosa cells all around it, and there's ovulation. Okay, so it's the Graafian follicle that actually ruptures and allows the um, oocyte and its corona radiata to be liberated, liberated, not liberated, liberated from the ovary. So that's it. Um, so just to recap, primordial follicles, oocyte plus a simple squamous epithelium, 
primary follicles can either be unilaminar or multilaminar, but they will have cuboidal epithelial cells instead of squamous epithelial cells around them in either one or many layers, but the cells are all touching. There are no spaces in between the cells. Once you have some spaces in between the cells, one or more, those spaces are called antra, and each antrum is going to be filled with liquor folliculi. Sorry about that. And as long as that oocyte is still centered, even if there's a sing single antrum, it is still a secondary follicle. However, once that oocyte is pushed over to the side, surrounded by a corona radiata, only held loosely to the wall of the antrum, we now have a tertiary or graphene follicle, and that's the one that will actually undergo ovulation. So that's it. I know this has gone kind of long, but I hope it helps. And until I see you next time, Stay safe, don't drink and drive, make good decisions, and remember, yes means yes.